outside of Nashville, Tennessee. This is the award-winning podcast, Reality. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for listening. My name is Sandman, and I'm going to be your guide through this strange realm of ghosts, cryptids, UFOs, aliens, conspiracy theories, and other unsolved mysteries that I like to call Parareality. Well, it's finally October, and that means that it's spooky season. The weather's getting colder, the leaves are changing colors, and haunted attractions all over the country are opening their doors to us eagerly awaiting hordes of horror fans hungry to be fed. And it also means that it's time for my annual Halloween episodes. If you listened to the last episode of Pair Reality that I did a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that I actually started those episodes early and I discussed with you how you can tell if you live in a haunted home. I certainly hope that those of you who think that your home might be haunted got some useful information out of it. And for the rest of you, hope that you got some good entertainment out of it or at least some other kind of good information. And speaking of haunted houses, just like last episode, that's the subject of tonight's episode of Parareality. I'm going to be taking you along with me on a haunted road trip across the United States to the most haunted spots in each state in alphabetical order. Some of these locations I've personally been to myself and the others Well, I haven't, but I used a lot of research to come up with this list. So this is the official Parareality Guide to Haunted Locations across the United States. And of course, as always, to learn more, you'll have to turn on, tune in, and find out. Going to forego the email. I know as I always say, oh, that's my... One of my most favorite uh, things to do, but I've got, you know, I've got a lot to cover and I'm not going to cover all 50 states in one episode. This is going to be a two parter. So tonight I'm going to cover the first 25 and then the next episode on the 15th, I will cover the other 25 for a total of 50. If I can squeeze DC in there, I might even include DC as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to just uh, forego the, uh, the fan mail, and we're going to get right into talking about the most haunted locations here in the United States. But before I do that, i got to do this. Aero Reality is a proud member of the Straight Up Strange podcast network. To learn more about all the awesome podcasts that are members of the Straight Up Strange family, go to straightupstrange.com and get strange. Hey, how would you like to be an agent of chaos? What is chaos? It's the knowledgeable apprentices of Sandman, and that's what I call my Patreon account members. I'm looking for new agents, and I'd love it if you'd sign up to become one. There are three levels of agents and all are extremely affordable, $5 a month or less. Each level offers exclusive content along with the ability to help create podcast episodes and even the chance to be a guest or a co-host. To learn more, head on over to patreon.com slash parareality. 100% of the proceeds from Patreon goes back into producing quality content for this podcast. You are listening to the Parareality Podcast, your information source for conspiracy theories, UFOs, the paranormal, and all things unexplained. New episodes drop the first Friday of every month at 8 o'clock p.m. Central U.S. time. Listen on your favorite podcast station. Turn on, tune in, and find out. If you wish to change, you must first lift the veil of ignorance that has been cast over your eyes. Only then will you see the true power of the universe. All right, let's not waste any time, and let's get into talking about the most haunted locations 
in every state in the United States, starting with my home state of Alabama. In Alabama, it's the Sloss Furnaces in Birmingham. Sloss Furnace is the most, well, it's, I don't know, man. It's probably one of the the oldest manufacturing buildings in the state of Alabama, at least one that's still standing. And it's almost as old as Birmingham itself. Construction began just 10 years after the founding of the city. Hundreds of steel workers toiled under the supervision of a tyrant that was nicknamed Slag. Now, Slag was a foreman who, well, as you can guess, he treated his crew pretty bad. And over the years, many workers died in horrific accidents. Most of them, or at least some of them, as a direct result of uh, Slag. One was dragged into the gears of one of the large flywheels. Another fell into the molten steel and was instantly incinerated. And visitors to the abandoned furnace report sightings of phantoms, including one to believe Slag himself. They hear screams, and there's even been physical attacks. Now, a couple of uh, those haunted uh, t- television shows have uh, been to Sloss Furnace in Birmingham. Most uh, famously probably would be Ghost Adventures, where they did an episode there. And let me tell you, Sloss Furnace is a big place. Now, despite the fact that it's in my home state, I've never had the opportunity to uh, go there and investigate. I I would love to, but I just haven't haven't had the opportunity yet. So if you're listening to this and uh, you can get me in a sloth's furnace, man, send me an email, sandman at parareality.com, and uh, yeah, let me know how I can get in there because I would love, love, love to be able to go into sloth's furnace. Um, it is an absolutely huge complex and it's, it's pretty dangerous to go in there, from what I understand. But uh, I'll still risk it anyway. Moving along to Alaska. And I'm hoping I'm going to pronounce this right. It's Kennecott Copper Mining Camp in Valdez, Cordova, Alaska. The ghosts of Kennecott Camp and the rail lines going to and from the mines are so scary that even developers have been convinced to leave the area alone. Visitors report seeing ghosts and hearing screams and moans. In the 1990s, developers building homes along one of the railroad lines canceled the project after too many construction workers quit. The workers reported almost constant screaming and wailing voices in the area along with missing tools, sometimes right from the tool belts that they were wearing. That is some spooky stuff right there to have a tool belt on, have your favorite tool in there, and then 10 minutes later go to grab it and the damn thing is gone. Just picked plucked right off of your tool belt. Ooh, man, scary. And, and screaming and wailing, I guess. I mean, you know, there, there were developers, so you know that they were doing this stuff during the day. They're not building crap at night, right? So can you imagine how if they were hearing this and experiencing all of this during the middle of the day, can you imagine how freaking scary that would be when the sun goes down and you can't see what's going on? Man, that's got to be freaking spooky, dude. Next, we come to Arizona and the Jerome Grand Hotel in Jerome. Now, I have actually been to this location. This is one of the handful on the list that I've been to. The Jerome Grand Hotel was originally a hospital, and it's said to be Arizona's most haunted building. Guests report hearing crying, coughing, and wailing in the halls. A bearded man often appears on the second and third floors. Another ghost is believed to be the spirit of a former employee named Harvey who may have been murdered and dumped into the elevator shaft in 1935. He's often seen in the stairwell or in the basement. Now, in the, 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 oh God, the the hotel, of course, was an old hospital, and it still has the original elevator 
that was in the thing when it was built. And it's absolutely beautiful. It works fine, although it's slow, but it works perfectly. And supposedly Harvey, uh, they found his body in the basement of the hotel where the elevator goes all the way down, and they still have an outline of where his body was found, where the elevator uh, basically decapitated him. Um, so when I went there, it was a, oh, God, it's been several years ago when I went there, and um, I went with my then-girlfriend, who is now my wife, and we stayed uh, only one night in the Jerome Grand. And let me tell you, Jerome is up, the, literally the, the whole town is built up the side of a mountain, and there's switchback roads that go from uh, street to street. you got one street on one level, the next street's, you know, up above it, and there's another street up above that. And basically, you keep going until you get to the top, and there's the Jerome Grand Hotel. Now, the rooms that are there are still period correct as far as furnishings and, and uh, like, sinks and toilets and stuff like that. It's still original stuff. So even though you're staying in a hotel... Don't expect this to be anything super grandiose, at least not where I was staying. I'm sure they have better rooms than, than where we were staying in. But uh, we stayed in a room that uh, had a balcony, and it overlooked the valley below. And let me tell you, it was beautiful, especially at night. So me being the paranormal enthusiast that I am, of course, I came prepared, and I came with my night vision camera and uh, some other equipment just in case something happened. So... Um, during the night, I did hear footsteps out in the hall, and I saw shadows under the crack of the door, you know, from the hallway. I'm not going to say that that was paranormal because I definitely could have been, def you know, somebody walking by, um, but I did hear that, um, but nothing else happened. So, as you can imagine, I was kind of bummed, and when uh, we were checking out the next morning, um, instead of, uh, waiting for, we had, well, we had taken the elevator down and, um, we were staying on the third floor, which is one of the supposedly haunted areas, right? Um, my, my wife had, had, uh, she had taken the elevator down and I was going to walk through some of the areas of the hotel and just because uh, they had uh, displays of uh, of stuff that that was you know from the period from the era in the hospital there like all over the place and I was going to look at some of the stuff you know and, and uh, I had my um, digital camera with me and I was just going to take some pictures and as I was going to um, walk down the stairwell I saw out of the corner of my eye a shadow figure that just whew, ran by really quickly. And he ran like up what he went up to where the stairwell would be, at least as best as I could tell. So I quickly followed with my camera in tow. I ran up the stairs into the stairwell and turned the corner. And um, where he where he went, there was nothing. And it was just a long hallway. And at the end of that hallway, was uh, it was closed because they were doing construction on the other side. So you couldn't get through that door because it was secured. So if it had been somebody, they would have had to have disappeared really quickly. And I would have seen doors moving or something like that. So there was, there was nothing there. But I saw this shadow figure dart down that hallway so I took my camera, took a picture. There was nothing in front of me, and I just kind of left it at that. Went downstairs, told my girlfriend what had happened, you know. And when I got home and I loaded up my pictures from the from the trip, I looked at that picture, and there where I took it, exactly down that same hall, the last spot where I saw the shadow figure was a big round orb. Now, I'm not a super 
orb enthusiasts. I don't think that all orbs are paranormal, that they're ghosts or anything like that. However, I think it's uh, uh, too much of a coincidence to ignore for me to have seen a shadow person streak down that hallway. And as soon as I rounded the corner to take the picture, there's nothing there, but I capture an orb. So, and I mean, there was nothing else. There was no other orbs in the picture, just that one. So it's, um, it, I would have to say that my, my trip did turn out to be a success, or at least my stay at the Grand Jerome Grand Hotel in Arizona did turn out to be a success. If you ever get a chance to go there, I totally suggest you do it, not just because it's haunted, but because it is a beautiful hotel and it gives you a great experience. All right, next up is Arkansas. In Arkansas, we have the Mount Holly Cemetery in Little Rock. Now, this is a large cemetery. It was founded in 1843. It has plenty of paranormal activity. Visitors there hear flute music. Someone's playing a haunt a, a flute from nowhere. People see uh, other people dressed in 19th century clothing who simply vanish in front of their eyes and witness statues moving of their own accord. Now that one I'm kind of, you know, not, not so sure about that one. But it is not uncommon to be in a cemetery and see people dressed in clothing of a different era and basically just disappear. I've, I've investigated my share of uh, cemeteries. I haven't seen a full-bodied apparition or anything like that yet, but hopefully I will. But uh, it's something that is not that uncommon. Next up is California, and we have the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose. And this is another place that I have been to personally. So I think if you're a paranormal enthusiast or a paranormal investigator, you've heard of the Winchester Mystery House, and you know who Sarah Winchester is. Well, Sarah Winchester began building her home in San Jose after the death of her husband. She was convinced that her family was being haunted by the spirits of Native Americans and soldiers who were killed by the Winchester repeating rifle manufactured by her husband's company. She built the Winchester house to provide a place for all of the spirits. She continued to build onto it until she, well, right up until the day that she died. She supposedly was told by spirit guides that if she continuously built on this house, and made uh, made it like a maze, and had this continual in, uh, construction on it that the the spirits of all of those people would not be able to harm her. Now, visitors there report seeing uh, Mrs. Winchester herself in the house and on the grounds, as well as a number of mysterious happenings, such as doorknobs turning by themselves, they hear disembodied footsteps, and windows slamming. Now, when I was there, admittedly, I was not there on a paranormal investigation. You don't just go up to Winchester Mystery House and say, Hi, my name's Sandman. I'm a paranormal investigator, and I have a podcast, and I want to investigate your house. And they're like, Sure, dude, come on in. It, it, just, it just doesn't work like that. So I was part of a tour, and we got to go through some of – the most purported haunted locations that they show on TV and they talk, you hear talk about and all that sorts of stuff. I had to say it's beautiful, but I didn't experience anything paranormal while I was there. Unfortunately, of course it was a tour in the middle of the daytime. You know, they say that stuff happens on these tours occasionally and that you never know, blah, 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 but nothing ever happened to me. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, no paranormal activity there, but it was still a beautiful house, and, and I really and enjoyed my time there. Next up is Colorado, the Molly Brown House in Denver. Now, I went to Denver not too long ago. I did not know that the Molly Brown House was haunted. If it was, I would have tried to have made arrangements to go there. Just didn't know about it then. So if you don't know who Molly Brown is, well, she's better known by the unsinkable 
Molly Brown. Now, the unsinkable Molly Brown was on the Titanic, and I can't remember exactly how the story goes, but basically she was on one of the lifeboats because she was a woman, so she got put on the lifeboat, and she basically took charge of the boat, was directing people where to row and to rescue these other people, and and she was responsible for saving a lot of lives and uh, was a survivor, and she gained the nickname the unsinkable Molly Brown. And she's said to haunt her own home. Visitors are said to smell roses or tobacco smoke. And they sometimes spot Molly, her husband, or her mother in various locations inside the home. Other paranormal activity includes piano keys moving without making a sound, strange shadows moving around, and doors closing on their own. If I had known about this, I would definitely have tried to have gone there when I was in Denver Too bad for me, right? Uh, Next is Connecticut. We have the Norwich State Hospital in Norwich, Connecticut. Now, the patients at Norwich State Hospital included many who were declared criminally insane after committing horrific crimes. During the time it was in operation, many people died there, either as the result of accidents by suicide and reports of serious abuse such as beatings, Harsh restraints and even sexual assault were pretty common there. After the hospital was was, was abandoned of screams, moans, and footsteps in the presence of ghostly apparitions through the hospital has been heard and seen, and and it's just uh, was supposedly very nerve-wracking. Unfortunately, though, the hospital has been demolished but the grounds are still reportedly haunted with the souls of the psychiatric patients there. So I I don't know if they built anything there on the site of Norwich State Hospital. I certainly hope that they have not. But, uh, yeah, can you imagine uh, just, like, walking around, just like, hey, cool, we're going for a walk, and then hearing all these screams and everything kind of brings you back to what we were talking about earlier was in in, in Alaska with the Kennecott Copper Mining camp where construction workers were hearing screams and wailing and had their tools go missing and stuff. So next we come to, oh, did, man, I got out of, no, I didn't. I was going to say I got out of sync, but no, I didn't. So uh, next we come to Delaware, and uh, the most haunted location in Delaware is Fort Delaware on Pea Patch Island. Now, Fort Delaware is over 150 years old and is reportedly full of spirits. The most famous resides in the kitchen is often seen by volunteers and visitors alike. While reenactment volunteers work in the kitchen, another woman dressed in 19th century clothing joins them, appearing to nod her approval before simply vanishing before your eyes. There's also reports of mysterious lights and sightings of a Confederate soldier on the ramparts, which is very common. And I believe um, the Ghost Hunters TV show, back when it was really popular, I believe that they did an episode in Fort Delaware. I I don't think they really captured anything. Um, Can't remember. It's been so long ago. Next up is Florida, and we have the May Stringer House in Brooksville. Now, I will be completely honest with you. I had never heard of this haunted location. Um, but when I was doing research for uh, the most, you know, some of the most haunted spots in Florida, this consistently kept popping up. So I think it's probably about the, it might not be the most popular haunted location in Florida, but I think it's certainly the most haunted location in Florida. So John and Marina May built this home in 1855, but Mr. May, unfortunately, only three years later, died of tuberculosis. And Marina remarried later on, but she later dialed while giving childbirth to her daughter, Jessie, who then turned around and died at the tender age of three So it is said that all three are said to haunt the house, which is now a museum. Guides report hearing children's laughter and cries. They see ghostly visions of Marina or John, 
and they report items being moved around the house, that particularly a doll that belonged to the baby Jesse. So that's a lot of tragedy going on in that one home. So it's no wonder that the area is haunted because you have so much of that tragic energy that's just built up there. That, that's got to be a spooky place to live, or excuse me, to work. I had to get a little drink there. Sorry about that. Next up is Georgia, the Bonaventure Cemetery in Savannah. Now, this haunted cemetery is home to a lot of spirits. Visitors there hear voices of people chatting and socializing and laughing, and they also report being chased by a pack of ghostly dogs who growl and bark and seemingly just are are just nipping at, at the heels of these people as they run away. And one famous ghost the ghost of Gracie Watson, who died of pneumonia at age six, is reported to be seen there. They report to hear her cry. Like I said, she's occasionally seen running to the cemetery. This is reportedly one of the most haunted places in the entire country, and you could probably do an entire episode almost devoted to, to that. I have, as a matter of fact, mentioned Bonaventure Cemetery in other episodes of this very podcast. So it is a very, very haunted location, very famous location as well. And next up, we have Hawaii. And I'm going to really slaughter this name, and I totally apologize for this. I'm going to try it. Here we go. A Newell Paley Lookout on the island of Oahu. Okay. The Paley Lookout is the location of a brutal mass murder. So when King Kamehameha the first won a battle against um, the chief of the Maui tribe, and oh God, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess this up. Okay, the Maui chief Kalinka Kulpe. So what he did was Kamehameha um, drove chief. Kalinka Kope, and 400 of his soldiers off of the side of this cliff at Nuanu Paley Lookout and just drove them off, off the cliff to their deaths. So at night, visitors there report hearing screams, moans, and voices from below the cliff, which is really spooky. Now, I've been to Hawaii. Uh, it was It was Maui that I was on, believe it or not. Um, but I did not go to Oahu. Um, didn't know about that place. I did investigate. What got me started investigating cemetery? Ow, hit my hit my leg. Uh, what got me started investigating cemeteries? Believe it or not, was a cemetery that I investigated in Maui, Hawaii. Um, it was an old old cemetery that was like at. Um, uh, it was in, in the middle of two roads. And uh, it was kind of like in a triangle. And um, my uh, my then-girlfriend, who is now my wife, and I, um, we were there on vacation. And uh, we kept passing by the cemetery. And so one night, I was, uh, one day I was like, I'm going back there at night, and I'm going to take some pictures by God. So I did. I got my wife or my girlfriend at the time to, to, to uh, drive me there. Dropped me off, and I took a bunch of pictures of the cemetery. Caught some unusual stuff, uh, some some orb like stuff, and uh, just uh, had a just an amazing experience there. And I thought, man, I really dig this. So that's kind of what got me started uh, investigating cemeteries. Was actually Maui, Hawaii. Now we're moving into the eyes. We're going to start off with Idaho, the old Idaho State Penitentiary. The old Idaho State Penitentiary is located in Boise. Now, it's considered by many to be the most haunted building in the state. In its over 100 years of operation, it became one of the most violent penitentiaries in America. Today, all the inmates are gone, at least the living inmates are gone, but people who uh, have gone there have 
experienced unexplained noises. They have overwhelming feelings of grief and paranormal activities make this place extremely haunted. Now, it seems like every old penitentiary in the United States has says the same thing. This was one of the most violent penitentiaries in America. Uh, any penitentiary in the 18th and 19th century and all the way up to the damn the middle of the 20th century were violent. Okay? Let's just get that over with. They were all some of the most violent places to be at in America. So this thing about, oh, it was one of the most violent penitentiaries in America. Yeah, yeah, they're all violent. They're all one of the most haunted places in America. Next up, Illinois, Bachelor's Grove Cemetery. Now, I've talked about Bachelor's Grove on this podcast before, and here we are talking about it again. Beginning in the 1970s, visitors to this Midlothian cemetery have seen orbs, apparitions, phantom vehicles, and even a floating shrinking and vanishing phantom farmhouse. That's just weird, a shrinking farmhouse. A mysterious black dogs, black dogs, excuse me, and figures in monks robes have also been seen in the cemetery. Investigations by paranormal investigators have turned up ghostly images of all of these things as well as some weird weird EVPs. Now, Bachelor's Grove Cemetery is one of probably the most haunted cemeteries in the United States. And hopefully, knock on knock on the wooden desk here, yours truly will get to go there one day. Uh, you know, in order for me to, to, to go investigate someplace, I really have to have a reason to go other than oh I'm just I just want to do a, a paranormal investigation because I'm trying to make a I'm trying to make a vacation out of it you know, and I just really don't know of anything that's in Illinois that I want to go see. Maybe I could go visit Chicago because Bachelors Grove is really not that far from Chicago, so maybe I should could go to Chicago and then uh, swing by Bachelors Grove. That's that would be the only way that I would go there. I think despite the fact that it's so supposedly haunted. All right, next we have the Velisca Axe Murder House in Iowa. I actually turned down an opportunity to go to this place because at the time, I just really didn't want to drive. (laughs) That's the God's honest truth. I wish that I um, hadn't made that decision because I missed out on a really good opportunity. Um, However... You know, c'est la vie. It is what it is. So in 1912, the town of Villisca became notorious when an entire family was slaughtered in their sleep by an unknown assailant with an axe. Now, this house is rumored to be haunted by the ghost of that entire murdered family, and people pick up all kinds of weird, weird um, EVPs in the house. They report seeing apparitions, uh, things are moved. The The biggest thing, though, are EVPs. Now, this house is available for lockdowns. If any of you are listening to this want to do a paranormal investigation there and you're looking you know, looking to, to, to go to a, a place where you're almost guaranteed to get something, well, it's available and you can go. Uh, if you do decide to, send me an email, sandman at com, and I'll join you. We'll get a... a a haunted road trip together. Instead of instead of driving, I'll just fly in. <laughs> well, that does it for the eyes. Next up are the K's. Kansas, the Stoll Cemetery. The Stoll Cemetery is rumored to be a gateway to hell. Stoll Cemetery is said to be a very actively haunted place. It's located next to an abandoned church in Stoll. And the cemetery is a subject of a lot of legends, some over 100 years old. Satan himself is rumored to appear there twice a year. And visitors say they've been grabbed by something invisible or suffered memory loss and other weird sicknesses while they're visiting that place. Um, I, um, 
I looked up when I was looking up stuff about Stull Cemetery. I had heard of Stull Cemetery, and it's really the only like true haunted place in Kansas that I really know about. Never been to Kansas, so obviously never been to Stull Cemetery. But um, from what I'm understanding, it's very difficult to find, and I think that it's like on some private land, or you have to go through private land to get there, and uh, they don't take kindly to trespassers. So if you go, you basically have to like trespass, and you better not get caught. That's what I'm understanding. Now we move along to the Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Kentucky, and this is a place that I have been to not once but twice. And let me tell you, Waverly Hills does not disappoint. It's located just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Waverly Hills Sanatorium opened its doors in 1910, and its purpose was to house the victims of the tuberculosis epidemic. The building is housed over uh, or the over 63,000 deaths with many of these spirits remaining behind and roaming the halls of this former sanatorium. Ghosts seem to wander just about every inch of this building and the grounds too. Witnesses here report unexplained lights, apparitions, shadow figures and other, you know, various other kinds of, of uh, phenomena. So, you know, creepy that's kind of putting it mildly here because this site's considered one of the most haunted places, not just in Kentucky, not just in Louisville, not just in the United States, but in the world. This place is considered one of the most haunted places in the world. And that's why I've been there twice. And let me tell you, like I said, it does not disappoint. I've seen shadow figures, so many shadow figures there that it just boggles the mind. You can see them just wandering down the halls, going in and out of rooms, shuffling around like zombies. It's so weird, so creepy. And one of the, man, I had so many experiences there. Um, we we took a, a, a ball into one of the rooms, like a, like a, 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 a child's ball, like a basketball, and we had it on the floor, and there supposedly in, in that area, there was supposedly a child who would roll the ball. And I will be damned if we didn't get the little child to roll the ball and play with us. We didn't get anything on EVP, but we did get the ball rolling, and I posted that online at some point. It may even be on my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, one of the things that happened to me personally was uh, I went by myself into um, one of the wards where they had uh, just, it was just rows and rows of beds um, that they had people in. There was like no, not even a curtain separating the people. It's just like this huge auditorium type deal where they just had people in beds just all over the place. And um, I experienced the most oppressive feeling that I have ever felt. It felt like whatever was there did not want me there and was basically um, pushing me out. I just felt very oppressed. I felt like I had a weight that was on my shoulders creeping down into my chest, just making me heavier and heavier and heavier. And I had to get out of there. And as soon as I left that area and walked down the hall where I headed back to where I came from, all that those feelings went away. And shortly after that, one of the people that was with my crew, she experienced a black shadowy mass rush up to her and uh, basically attack her um, as as she was standing against the wall. This she saw this thing coming at her in the dark, and it was blacker than the dark that was around her. I mean, you've heard people say stuff like that. Well, it's true. It was blacker than the dark that was around her. She said it was just like this big mass thing, and it rushed at her. And she backed up, hit the wall, and kind of slid down. And she said as it came right up to her, it just kind of poof vanished. Like it was just scaring her, you know, 
like, ha-ha, gotcha type deal, only it scared the hell out of her. And um, she was, uh, unfortunately, she was. we had split up, and she was there by herself. And by the time that I found her, she was, uh, she was a mess. It was, it was pretty bad. But, uh, yeah, those are my experiences. At uh, and another thing, oh, yeah, um, as we were taking pictures, and this was the first time I was there, the, the crew that I was with, as we were taking pictures of this place in various locations, there, were, there was in the background in several pictures a freaking skull that would appear in the background of, of some of the pictures that I took, and it was the same skull but in different locations. Now, I know that sounds really, really weird, and I would say, you know, if it didn't happen to me. But I, there was like three or four times where we were in different locations. We're taking pictures. You get home, you put them up on the computer, and there's a, a, a skull, just like a floating skull in the background. It's really, really creepy. And I don't know why there would be this skull that would be following me around or following my crew around, but yet it sure was. So those are my experiences at Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Kentucky. If you ever get a chance to go, you should do it. Oh, let's see. We're getting close to being at the end of tonight's episode. Just got a few more to talk about. Let's move to... um, uh, let's move to Louisiana and talk about the Myrtles Plantation. Now, this is also known as one of America's most haunted homes. The Myrtles Plantation is said to be haunted by the individuals who had to endure slavery. It's located in St. Francisville, and it's believed to be the site of at least 10 murders. Many visitors, as well as employees in the hotel, still hear the dying footsteps of the former owner who died on the stairs after being shot by a stranger. Many have reported capturing photographs of former slaves while they were taking their tours around the plantation. And, of course, it's been on many uh, paranormal shows, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, you you name it, Myrtle's Plantation has been on it. Um, I've never been. I've always wanted to go, but I've never been there. I'm not really too sure how haunted this place is. I do think that a place can get haunted out. You know, uh, uh, so many people go and visit it that eventually things stop happening. And I think that Myrtle's Plantation is suffering from that. I think it's one of those places. So let's move to Maine and talk about the Strand Cinema. The Strand Cinema is in Skohagen, and it's considered to be the most haunted place in Maine. Patrons have reported everything from sighting uh, apparitions to physical contact being actually touched at the theater. In 1978, the building was modified and the workers there began taking the uh, brunt of the ghost anger because you know if you're in a haunted location and you start messing around and start remodeling, that's going to piss them off, right? They were shocked by electric tools that weren't even plugged in. Tools were thrown around and stains were splattered all over newly painted walls. There was a shadowy apparition that has been reported to have thrown a piece of balcony ceiling into the sets, and handprints has been found on the movie screen when supposedly no one's touched it. And the strand is considered uh, by the locals there to be like... You want to see a ghost or you want to experience something, that's the place to go is the Strand. Next up, Maryland, Point Lookout. Point Lookout was used as a prisoner encampment and hospital during the Civil War, and it's located in Scotland, Maryland. It's estimated that over 8,000 people died during their time at the camp. Many campers who camp at Point Lookout State Park encounter the ghost of Confederate soldiers either walking across the roads or walking alongside of them as they're strolling down the park. Several paranormal activities have been experienced in the lighthouse itself, including pictures taken of ghosts, various frightening EVPs, and blatant encounters with apparitions. Now we have Massachusetts and the Bridgewater Triangle. Ooh, this one, man, 
You gotta if you ever go to Massachusetts, you gotta go see the Bridgewater Triangle. There's no haunted place in the Commonwealth more famous than the Bridgewater Triangle. It's a 200 mile space in southeastern Massachusetts that some believe to be the center of weird paranormal activities. Many of the mysterious occurrences revolve around the Hockamock Swamp. It's a 16, over 16,000-acre 16, wetland located in the Freetown Fall River State Forest. The Hockamock Swamp is known to serve as a dumping ground for murder victims and reports of cults practicing black magic. In Michigan, we have the Traverse City State Hospital. Traverse City State Hospital, located in Traverse City, operated for more than 100 years, and during those years, many stories have evolved about the restless spirits and the patients who never checked out of the hospital. Visitors report feelings of ominous and oppressive feelings. There's said to be a portal to hell, which can be found under the hippie tree, located on the trails behind the building. There are reports of disembodied screams and Voices echoing through the empty halls. Lights are said to turn off and on by themselves. And this is made even more frightening by the fact that there's not been electricity in that building for decades. Now we have Minnesota and the Four Paul Restaurant. Now a restaurant. This old manor home was once a private home to wealthy wholesaler Joseph Four Paul. And of course his family. Both Joseph and the maid Molly died in the home and are said to haunt the premises today. Legend has it that the two were having, of course, a torrid affair. And riddled with guilt, Joseph shot himself in the head. And then a heartbroken Molly hanged herself a few days later. While Joseph seems to simply stroll the grounds, Molly tends to terrify guests, pounding the walls and exploding glasses on They say that she likes to spend time at social events, and her ghostly figure can be seen in a recent wedding photograph. Next, we have the Grand Opera House in Mississippi. The magnificent Meridian Music Hall is home to some very talented guests, or ghosts, should I say. (laughs) The entertainment is out of this world. They're singing specters that grace the space and perform when the main hall is dead quiet. Visitors have also reported cold spots and a feeling of being tapped on the left shoulder. Why just the left? I don't know. But it's the left shoulder and not the right. Next up is the Savoy Hotel in Missouri. This Kansas City spot is the oldest continuously operating hotel in the United States west of the Mississippi River. Built in 1888, the hotel is home to several spirits. Betsy Ward, who lived in, lived in room 505, was found dead in her bathtub. Many strange occurrences have been reported in the room over the years. A man named Fred Leiter is said to haunt a different room, and a young girl wearing a Victorian-era dress has been seen wandering around on the fourth floor. Now we have the Little Bighorn Battlefield in Montana, and this is the last stop of the night. Located near Billings, hundreds of soldiers lost their lives on this land. And according to some, visitors and even Park Service employees, many of these soldiers still linger. Witnesses have described hearing battle cries, rifle shots, and bugles, with several reporting actual ghost sightings. And that does it. I'm kind of speeding up to try to save some time for tonight. Wow, I still got a long way to go. So we're about halfway through our journey to the most haunted locations in the United States. We'll start next episode with the ends in Nebraska, Nevada, and New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, North Dakota. And then we'll continue on from there. Man, so that does it for tonight. We're going to stop on our tour and take a rest here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for traveling with me on this haunted journey across the United States. But before I close it out, I want to tell you about one more thing here. Do you like being scared? Does the feeling of your throat tightening fear, leaving you unable to scream, exciting? 
But the answer to these questions is yes. Then you should listen to Scared to Death. Stories of suspense, science fiction, and horror. Scared to Death airs the third Friday of every month at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Tune in for the fright of your life. <laughs> things are going in the world? Have you always wanted to save whatever was on your mind without having to listen to someone bitch about it or suffer any repercussions? Well, me too. That's why I created the Set It Off podcast. I'm sick and tired of the stupidity that's going on around here, and I'm going to let everybody know how I feel about it. So hop on board this train and fasten your seatbelt because I'm about to set it off. Set It Off can be heard on your favorite podcast station. New episodes drop on the fourth Friday of every month at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time. You never know what I'm going to say next. Well, I hope that you enjoyed tonight's episode of Pair Reality. If you want to leave a comment about it or anything else about the podcast, let me tell you how you can get in touch with me here because there are a few ways you can do it, and here they are. The best way and easiest and quickest way to do it is to email me. My email address is sandman at parareality.com. That's sandman at parareality.com. Or you can also track me down on my social media accounts. You can find me on Facebook. That's uh, facebook.com slash sandman.parareality, where you can find the official Parareality podcast Facebook group. You can post a message on my wall there or Slide into my DMs right there on Facebook. And if you have a Twitter or Instagram account, you can follow me on both of those. My username is at Radio. That's at Radio. You can just slide into my DMs there, too. And finally, you can always call the podcast at 615-692-1170. That's the direct line to the studio line here in the secret bunker. Just call that number, 615-692-1170, and leave me a message on the voicemail. But I want you to remember this. If you do decide to leave me a message, you're giving me permission to play your comment back on the show. So if you don't want that to happen, you'll need to let me know somewhere in your message. Now, I'm always looking for interesting stories for the podcast, so if you have a story you'd like to get on the show Tell it to me over the voicemail if you want. There's about a three-minute time limit there, so if you uh, run out of time, just call back and pick up where you left off. So those are all the different ways you can get in touch with me here at Parareality. Let me go over them again real quickly. Email, best, best, fastest, and easiest way, sandman at parareality.com. Find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash sandman.parareality. Get in touch with me on Twitter and Instagram. My handle on both of those is at Radio. That's at Radio. And finally, you can call that studio line here in the secret bunker, 615-692-1170. And also, don't forget to visit parareality.com, my website. Parareality.com is a place where you can keep up on the latest paranormal news from all around the world. I've got an entire page of the website devoted to that, and that content is updated almost daily. It's under the Para News section. You can also shop in the Parareality store and get some swag, watch some of the videos that I've made for the podcast over the years, and you can even listen to the podcast archives. I got tons of audio on the website from the various incarnations of Parareality throughout the years, along with my other podcast, Set It Off and Scared to Death. You can find all that content for free in the archive section of the website. That's parareality.com. Make sure you check it out. Parareality can be heard on your favorite podcast station, all you got to do is just search for 
the Para Reality Podcast. And if you've got a smart speaker and you've got any of those podcast skills uh, activated on it, you can listen there too. Just say, hey, play the Para Reality Podcast. If you have uh, uh, any of those skills on, on your smart speaker, you can listen to Para Reality. I've also got a YouTube account, and you can listen to the podcast there too. I upload all the audio from my podcast there because people actually do listen to it. I'm uh, experimenting with making podcast videos now in case anyone just wants to watch me talk about all the weird stuff that I talk about. I'm posting some videos of that up there as well. Uh, I've got some other videos like UFO and paranormal documentaries. I've got chemtrail videos. I did a, a, a little news segment I call News of the Strange that I did a few episodes for. I haven't done that in a while. i got to get back to that. I've also got some terrible videos that I did back when I was trying to do a, a web series all by myself. Uh, that sucked. Uh, so uh, I got those up there for your viewing pleasure. You can watch that and feel free to make fun of it because they're terrible, I know. So to find the channel, you just go to youtube.com slash user slash parareality1. That's the number one. YouTube.com slash user slash parareality1. And before I sign off, I want to tell you, so I mentioned about uh, my companion podcast, Set It Off and Scared to Death. So let me tell you, Set It Off, played a little commercial. It's just about any random thing that just kind of sets me off. Here lately, it's been a lot of stuff about the coronavirus. Go figure, about COVID-19 and the vaccines and stuff. However, Scared to Death. That's one of the things that I has one of my passion projects where I replay old horror and sci-fi and mystery radio plays from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And um, I am usually I do it on the fourth Friday of every month at 8 p.m. However, this October, I am going to do a special episode and it's going to be on October the 30th. So instead of it being on the fourth Friday of the month, I'm moving it to October 30th, which is a Saturday. It's the last Saturday of the month. I'm going to be a, doing a special double feature, double episode. I'm going to be playing the original horror radio drama Dracula, followed by the original radio play Frankenstein. And that all begins at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time on Saturday, October the 30th. Dracula will premiere at 8 o'clock, and at 9 o'clock, Frankenstein will premiere. So two se- I'm not doing it all in one episode. I'm dividing it up into two episodes special for the Halloween season. You can listen to those on any of your favorite podcast stations. Uh, they're all I'm, it's distributed all over the place. That, along with Set It Off and Para Reality, you can find anywhere you listen to. To your podcast. So be sure if you like to be scared and you don't have anything to do on October the 30th and you want to listen to some good old horror radio at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time on Saturday, October the 30th, right there on Scared to Death, you're going to hear Dracula followed by Frankenstein radio drama at 9 p.m. Central Time. And the next episode of Pair Reality is going to air on Friday, October 15th at 8 o'clock p.m. Central U.S. time. Going to be finishing up our haunted road trip across America and discussing the rest of the 25 most haunted locations in the United States. So make sure you turn on, tune in, and find out. I hope that this podcast opens your mind up to new ways of thinking, expands your consciousness, and produces a change in the way you see the world. If you wish to change, you must lift the veil of ignorance that has been cast over your eyes. Only then will you see the true power of the universe. I hope you have a wonderful evening, a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you again next Friday, October the 15th. If you wish to change... You must first lift the veil of ignorance that has been cast over your eyes. Only then will you see the true power of the universe.